It's Tuesday night, 5.15 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's the cooking class. Tonight we're going to be making um, basically smothered uh, pork chops that we're gonna bake into the oven. They turn out so deliciously moist, but you could also use any cut of beef if you wanted to as well. It would taste more like a beef stroganoff, but that's pretty good too. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. But first, really quick, I know that a lot of you guys that watch the live are veterans here and you don't need to hear this again but we have got a, quite a few new subscribers like over the last week or so and i'm getting the same questions over and over and over again so i'm just going to say it really quick here so that hopefully those new subscribers will watch this live get their answers and be happy okay so for any of you guys that are wondering where i get my supplements from etc there are links all down below for all of the stuff hey sharon that i'm about to talk about Love this company. It's linked down below. This is Perfect Supplements. This is a desiccated liver. This is one of the reasons why I love this company. Um, because you can buy the desiccated liver in a loose powder. Okay. So you can put it in your smoothies, which, okay, to me. But you can put this in meatloafs, um, meatballs. Or if you have an encapsulation machine, which are only like $20, and some empty capsules, you can fill your own and save some pretty big money. So that's one reason why I fall in love with this company. They also test all of their stuff for glyphosate, etc. So the link's down below. They also sell um, fermented liver oil at the same website. And then also the emu oil, which I'm back on, uh, which is a really, really great source of vitamin K2, MK4. So that link is down below. Um, also my cookbook links down below. All my meal plans are down below. Everything you can possibly want to purchase is down below in the links, okay? All right, so tonight, let's get started. Sorry about the hat. I don't typically wear hats, but we've been outside. It's windy, and if I take this off, my hair is like a total wreck. So you just got to live with the hat for tonight. Hey, Bethany. Hi. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 350 degrees. Mommy, you making Yeah? Yeah, I'm making some stuff. <laughs> That's what we do on the cooking class, right, you guys? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna angle the camera down. Let's get this, this meal into the oven. Okay. So, the first step is actually going to be preheating our cast iron over medium heat. This is a huge cast iron compared to my small burner. So, I'm going to actually go medium high heat with this pan just till it comes up to temperature because it will take a really long time if I don't do that. And then we gotta get us some lard. What's up, Bethany? <laughs> You're kinda wild, aren't you? Um, you didn't wanna watch the movie? Um, yeah, but it's not starting. I'm not starting it. Hey, Jackie! Jackie! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> It's from somebody's house, baby. No, this is Jackie. This is Jackie. She's a lady who's on our channel. Yeah, no, Jackie. Jackie. Okay, so this is lard. I'm going to put it in my pan back here. If this pan was better seasoned, I might not need any fat to cook this stuff, but um, this pan I bought probably five years ago. I don't use it as much because it's so huge, whereas my 12-incher I use all the time, and it's, like, well-seasoned and probably wouldn't need lard. If you don't have lard, you can use butter. Not a problem. Coconut oil, duck fat, goose fat, all good choices. All right, so that's starting to melt, as you guys can see. All right, this is super easy. We're gonna go ahead and chop one yellow onion. I gotta choose my knife. What do I wanna choose? Hmm. I'll go this route. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing okay. It is busy planting season, and special note: this will probably be one of the last baked to make for the next four months um it's 80 here so um yeah I, there's no point in running the air conditioner uh just to bake a meal so <laughs> this will probably be the last one my azure order comes tomorrow and that's when my meal plans change each month and so my groceries come tomorrow and we'll be headed into some new meals and those new meals are, like I said before, um, in last week's live, are more fast, crock pot, no baking, 
Um, I have little to no time because I'm gardening like a fool I have recipes. <laughs> um, tomorrow our meat chicks arrive from Freedom Ranger Hatchery. I strongly encourage that if you have always raised Cornish cross chickens that you look into those Freedom Rangers. They taste so much better um, and the birds are so much healthier than the Cornish cross. That's freedomranger.com, I believe, or Freedom Ranger Hatchery, maybe. But ours are supposed to arrive tomorrow, so that's kind of when the craziness is all happening. It's all tomorrow. Okay, so since this skillet is preheated, I'm going to go ahead and lower it down. Jackie says, I'm glad you were able to do a class this week. Thank you. Yeah, I canceled it, and then they got so many orders at Azure, they had to bump our delivery back. What I was going to um, say is make sure you keep all of your onion peeling. These are organic onions. You can throw these in your pot when you're making broth for extra flavor. Just make sure you take the sticker off. Um, that's kind of one of the downfalls of Azure Standard is that um, after, it didn't used to be this way, before COVID um, and the food crisis are our country's having as far as pricing and everything else goes. Before all that happened, Azure Standard was dependably every day, same time, delivery. It was awesomely great. Then COVID hit, people freaked out, panic by, you know, they didn't have the staff to fill the orders, everything got backed up, trucks took longer to deliver things, and it just messes the whole system up. And, and it's, it kind of regulated for a while, about six months ago. And now that we're headed into summer slash fall, there's becoming more panic again. And so there's more orders. And so the day, specific day you get your order, you're not really quite sure, which doesn't really work for people who work outside of the home. I'm blessed to be at home with my So I can see how if you had a schedule, that just would not work. Okay. So these are organic um, mushrooms. I've already chopped them and froze them. I buy these in bulk from Azure Standard for a really good deal. I cannot buy organic mushrooms locally. They just don't sell them. Um, so I buy them from Azure Standard. They can come in a two pound container or 10 pound and then I just chop them, um, usually with my dicer machine, and then throw them in freezer bags. So this is about eight ounces of mushrooms. It makes cooking go a lot quicker too. I always leave that light on and I forget you guys can see better without the light. All right, so we're just gonna saute this and as I said, my oven is preheating at 350 degrees. Try and break the onions up. My husband does not like onions, um, so if they're crunchy at all, he'll pick them out of his food. Um, he just has to live with onion chunks because I love onions, so <laughs> he'll get over it. Okay, so while this is sauteing, I'm going to take a 9 by 13 pan here. We're going to lard it on up. I love it when lard's been on the countertop because it's like so smooth. <laughs> When it's really warm, I do usually, but I just made a huge batch of sourdough English muffins because those are fabulous. They turned out beautiful. Um, these are fabulous to have on hand. They freeze well, but these are fabulous to have on hand for quick breakfast, so even quick lunches. You can use these in place of a hamburger bun. You could use it um, for like egg salad sandwich, chicken salad sandwich, like um, English muffins are not just for breakfast, guys. And they can totally make your day doable if you don't have time to rise buns and bake them at the right time. I'm glad you have this recipe which doesn't have mushroom soup, yes. Also inside your cookbook, Sharon, there is a cream of mushroom soup, but it takes more time. That's actually one of the things I'm going to be doing this fall is I'm going to be actually canning cream of mushroom soup. Um, this is a quick grab it off the shelf thing. Um, I don't use it a ton, but it would be nice to have some. 
just for that quick crop crop meal or something. Okay, so we're just sauteing. And tonight, usually I thicken this recipe with um, like sprouted flour or something. But tonight we're gonna use cream cheese because that's my alternative I like to go to that is low carb and um, grain free. But tonight I'm gonna do something I've never done before and we're gonna do it live, which is kind of interesting. I made some chev, which is goat cheese. It's a goat cheese version of cream cheese. So anyway, I'm going to try this in this recipe and see how it goes. <laughs> if all else fails, I will pull out my sprouted flour, but I think it'll work just fine. I'm kind of in that stage where I'm making goat cheeses and I'm like having to try them in recipes and just see like, oh, do we like that or was that not really a go? <laughs> so this is one of those recipes. Okay, so the onions are mostly cooked here. And what I'm going to do, hang on a second here. I'm gonna chop these large pork chops in half. These came from a farmer, so they're not, not your typical sized store bought ones. They're about double the size. I'm just gonna start adding these to the pan. Look at how the size of that, <laughs> it's huge. I didn't even know if I could even eat that in one sitting. Like if I was even if I was super hungry. And these are bone-in pork chops. You could use boneless if you want. Like I said, this came from the farmer, so it's got bones. <laughs> the one thing that I was I forgot to mention last week when we were making chicken is that it's super important when you go to the store to buy chicken or really anywhere that you actually steer away from boneless skinless chicken breasts that's why none of the recipes in my cookbook call for boneless skinless chicken breasts um, and the reason why is because when you remove the bones and the skin you're removing a really great source of vitamin a um, and so it's really important for your body to have vitamin a when you're eating protein and so um, Try to buy bone-in chicken with the skin still on it. And get rid of my cutting board here. I forget how much higher the amount of vitamin A is in a boned and skinned uh, chicken product versus a boneless skinless, but I know that in some of the presentations that are up here on YouTube, um, by Sally Fallon Morell about nourishing diets. It, she gives you the chart right there in her presentation that compares the values when those meats were tested. So you're actually getting more bang for your buck. All right, Sharon says, I'm making the shake and bake chicken and steak fries tonight. Oh, yummy. That sounds so good. <laughs> I was messaging with my friend um, the other night and I was like, oh, what are you having for dinner? And I forget what she was having, and then she said, well, what, what are you guys having? I said, oh, egg salad sandwich. She's like, well, that sounds really good. So I said, well, I, I would meet you halfway. We could switch dinners. And then she said, no, my kids won't eat any sort of egg salad or chicken salad or anything like that. So she, said she would enjoy it, but not so much her children. So we didn't switch. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and salt and pepper these. I'm going to grab the salt and pepper. I have mint coming out of my ears. It took over my um, raised planter bed. So if any of you guys have any ideas of what to do with mint, can you guys comment down below and let me know because I have so much. I have a four by eight garden bed that is completely full of mint now. It's mojito mint though. It's not spearmint and it's not peppermint. It still tastes good. So I just sprinkled these with some healthy salt. If you're wondering what healthy salt is, it's colored salt. So pink Himalayan salt, um, Celtic sea salt that's gray. We just want some color in there. That brings in your minerals. It helps to balance out your body so the salt doesn't cause issues that sodium typically does for most people. 
okay, fresh brown, uh, fresh browned black pepper. You can omit this if you want. It's all gonna get smothered in a gravy sauce anyway. But the gravy sauce tastes really good with pepper in it. So all we're doing is browning these because they're gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start flipping these. Just gonna kind of agitate them to kind of push, ooh, that was a wild onion. Kind of push the meat down onto the pan so it can get browned a little bit better. There we go. Now I'm gonna grab my milk because that's the next step. This is goat's milk, so it has an old label on it. I'm horrible with that. A lot of my canning jars have old labels on them. Anyway, this is our goat milk from our farm. This was this morning's milk, actually. I'm, we're typically bringing in about two gallons of milk a day. And um, at first we were like swimming in milk and now we're trying to, um, we're trying to find ways to use it so we've been making cheese and stuff. Jackie says, would this not be a good recipe if you have thick pork chops? You can totally do this with thick pork chops because all we're doing is browning. It's more for like texture and appearance, okay? We're well, not cooking these all the way through. So once they get a little bit of simmered on the on the bottom, we're gonna flip them on over and let it simmer it on the other side. Just gonna give like a little golden brown um, look to it. And then we're gonna put these right into the baking dish and bake them. So it doesn't matter how thick your pork chops are. In fact, I have two thicknesses inside this pan right now because I have pork from our last hog and then pork from the current hog that we just got. And last, um, the last hog was like an inch thick pork chop, and the latest one I had them go a little thinner. I think I went three quarters on the other one, but it really doesn't matter with this recipe because like I said, we're just going to throw it right into the oven. A lot of times people will brown meats like roast and stuff so that when you slow cook them they don't just like completely fall apart there's like a little bit of a resistance there um it's just for texture really this recipe reminds me of my pork chop recipe that's inside my cookbook that we haven't made in a really long time and it was that some, um what's it tomato gravy smothered pork chops i think is what the name of it is that was so good that had bacon and everything in it and i had had my bacon from me um what's it called not seasoning it um i'm not gonna be able to think of it now anyway preserving it and then smoking it um i did that whole process last year and i'm gonna do it again this year as well i have bacon into the freezer that needs to be um what is the word i can't remember that word not preserved, salted, brined, you know, brined and then smoked. So that's on my to-do list. I also have two huge hams from this, this pig here that I've got to salt up and then, um, and then it'll be time to smoke them. All right, 13 by nine pan, it's coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and move the pork chops from the stove over and it's cooked on both sides. And like I said, these are not cooked, so do not take the meat and eat it at this point. It is not cooked. <laughs> cured, yes, Jackie. The word cured. Why couldn't I think of that? Last year, I did a salt and sugar cure, but I cut the sugar down by half, because we don't really eat sugar, um, and it turned out really good. 
it turned out so good that I had a hard time um, buying store-bought bacon after that. <laughs> kind of a disaster. I think the the smoker pellets I bought were apple wood. And I just bought like a tube. If you go back and watch that video from last spring, I had bought a tube that goes right inside your grill. So you don't have to buy a smoker. All you have to do is have a grill. Um, and I just filled it with the smoker pellets and lit it on fire and let it smoke for, I forget how many hours, six I think. On a cool day, of course. Because we're not cooking the bacon, we're just smoking it. All right. Take all these out, and then we're going to add some milk. They're nice and stacked on in there. All right. I'm going to turn my heat down to medium on this pan. It's definitely warm. You know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to put just a little bit of lard in there. Because it is so hot that I don't want my milk to all of a sudden cook off. And maybe just a smidge of water. Let's do that. So what I'm doing is called deglazing. And when you have a pan that has uh, bits of food that have become kind of crusted to the bottom a little bit, if you add a liquid, a lot of people use like cooking wine or something, but if you add a liquid, it will take all that flavor up off the pan. And when we add our milk, it's gonna just flavor that milk of sauteed onions and the pork and all the yummy flavors. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add the milk. I'm gonna start with two cups and we'll go from there. Uh, you guys can see it right there on the camera. See how the, the milk is already like a brownish, see it? That's all the flavor I just got out of the pan by just adding a little bit of water before I added my milk. Okay. Now, that was two cups. I'm going to stir that around. I'm thinking we're going to add one more cup. Let's do a half, just to be safe. Like I said, I've never made anything with goat cream cheese. <laughs> so, here it goes. Wish me luck. So this is softened cream cheese, or in this case, Chev. Um, there's that. Gotta wait for the pan to heat back up because I shut it off just for a second because it was getting kind of wild. I'm gonna whisk it on up. We'll see how that chev works. <laughs> so far, I think I'm gonna need some more, some more of it. I'm gonna pull this off here, which I can go grab some more. I'm gonna go grab some more while that warms up. Be right back.
My house is getting so warm because now we got the oven going. It was 81 in here before we started the oven. So I had to open some windows. So this is still frozen. I'm not sure how this is going to go. But I make my goat cheese and then I freeze it because um, I'm not sure where I'm going to use it. And I don't want it to get goaty goaty tasting. It's all the experiments at this point. In worst case scenario, I just add some sprouted flour. But if you have regular cream cheese, it should thicken with around eight ounces, maybe a pound at the most. So I open my door. So if a chicken comes in or a cat, it could get wild. There's a cat meowing out there. I can hear it. Kitty! Sounds like a sad cat. <laughs> hmm. It's a little breezy out there today, but it's been warm. And like I said, we've been trying to get our garden in, which has been good. It's just been dry this week. It was rain it rained all last week, so we couldn't get anything last week in the garden. Got some big chunks here. I think if I would have put a whole pound of Chev out and softened it, I think it would have just thickened right up. I'm like trying to melt it to the bottom. <laughs> Let's see where are my chunks at. Oop, there's one. It's softening. But I still don't think it's going to be enough. So I'm going to pull out my sprouted flour. And we're going to thicken it just a little bit with that. I thought it was all out of sprouted wheat. And then I found this at the bottom of the freezer. So that was nice. It's definitely time to get some more growing. So I'm just going to add this because it's not thickening the way I would want it to. And I don't know if it's because I'm using goat uh, cream cheese or if it's because the cream cheese was frozen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bit just to thicken it up just a little bit more. We're about halfway there. And remember, because I am adding thickener now, we're going to wait until this comes up to a simmer to judge whether or not we need any more. I've added half of a tablespoon. But like I said, if you're using regular cream cheese and it's softened, eight ounces to a pound, and this should be thick. But like I said, I've got, I've still got partially frozen, <laughs> partially frozen goat cheese in here. It'll thaw out in the oven, right? <laughs> I think I might serve this with some asparagus tonight. Um, I have a neighbor that is lovely and shares her asparagus patch with us. It's huge. And so when her and her husband are gone, they share, which is so nice. I've got this big old thing of milk. I'm going to leave it out because just in case little Will comes over for his little nightly uh, cooking class request. We were mixing a whole bunch of grain the other day and the sound of the grain like being mixed by hand was so relaxing and I thought, you know, there's all those people on YouTube that do all those, is it ASMR or something? I don't know what that even stands for, but anyway, it's like videos that just have sound that like relax people and I thought, I wonder if anyone else finds the sound of grain being mixed by hand relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a funny thought.
I just add another half a tablespoon. You can definitely smell that it is not cow cream cheese in there. <laughs> because it's not. It's not cow cream cheese, it's goat. It's one of those things that I've had to get used to. It's like, well, if you're going to turn it into cheese, then yes, there's going to be a slight taste of goat. You're going to be able to tell it's not cow. It just is what it is. But it's really not too bad. I haven't gotten into the um, hard cheeses yet. I'm a little scared to do that because of the goat taste. But maybe I'm just overthinking it. Um, I don't know. So it's something I'd like to get into because if I can save my family some more money on cheese, that would be awesome. And it would be like our cheese. I'm going to add one more half. So I think it's a total of three tablespoons now. Um, but if I can save my family more money and have raw cheese right here on the farm, that's what I want to do. I also like to get my hands, well, I got to get a cheese press in order to do that. I don't own that, one of those yet. Um, but I also need to get a cream separator. There we go. It's finally thickening up enough. Just needed some extra help. Okay, so I'm going to take a ladle and we're just going to cover the pork chops in the gravy. I do love... I do love, like, um, Chev, like to make cheese balls um, that you can eat with sourdough crackers or what have you. So this um, is really, really good served like over baked potatoes. If you're doing potatoes, baked rutabagas if you're not doing um, <coughs> baked potatoes. Um, asparagus as a side sort of deal. So I think that's what we'll probably end up doing. So this is not like super thick. You sure could do it super thick, but because I'm gonna put some baked potatoes into the oven for the kids, we want kind of a more watery gravy. If you were gonna make this as your main dish, you would want to make it just a little bit thicker. But because we want it to run all over the potatoes. We gotta have just a slightly runnier consistency here. There. Let's rescue the last few. There. Okay, so this 13 by nine pan is going into my oven, which is preheated to 350 degrees. And this is gonna bake, depending on the thickness and the size of your pork chops, somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes. Really, just make sure the pork is cooked all the way through. Do I have a chicken in my kitchen yet? Not yet. <laughs> so, funny story. When we were building this building, we were living in the right next to it. Off-grid, right? And... Did she come in? Anyway... There's a door over here, and that door didn't used to be there because it was like a framed structure with just an opening for the door. And there was this chicken, and she constantly came in here. And this is obviously before it's finished, so it's just like a two by four wall. But constantly came in here and was insistent that she was going to lay an egg right over underneath that. See that? Oop, right there. See that um, electrical outlet? Right underneath it. So every day she'd come in here and lay an egg, just like on the bare concrete, plopped it out. And my husband was like, don't let her do that. Don't let her do that. She'll want to come in when we get it finished. And I said, oh, no, she won't. She's just, I said, how many people get to have a chicken that comes into their house and lays an egg in their dining room? That's so cool. Not many people can say that. 
So we like moved a little nesting box in here while we were finishing the building. And every day she'd come in to lay her, her egg there. Well, the day, the day finally came where my husband put the door inside the building and essentially locked her out of the building, which was completely devastating. She would go to the door and pace back and forth until someone would open it. So now if I open it, um, she sometimes comes in. So anyway, my phone just alerted me that it's overheating again. I have no idea why, but it is. So I'm going to end the live.